All right, so this is World War II by army sizes by Christopher, which is also my name. And this is a massive undertaking of a video. I think I read the description of his video and it said it took him a year to research and make, which, wow, I can't even imagine the amount of work that went into studying the six years of the war from 1939 to 1945 comparing the army sizes, making the video, finding the historical documents. It's its just insane. So if you get a chance, go check out the original. Um, this one is going to be really long, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, because even though it's a 13 minute long video, it goes by at lightning speed. And we're going to be covering six years of history in 13 minutes. So um, I think I'm going to be pausing a lot. And I've also changed the video format. You might have noticed a bit because the, the author, he writes subtitles here in the bottom left. Um, and I did notice one other uh, YouTuber who reacted to this video. Uh, he, he had the subtitles uh, cut off here. Uh, so I wanted to make sure that the video was shown in its, in its proper format with, with the titles written in. Um, please remember to comment, like, subscribe all helps trying to get to a thousand subscribers right now so every single subscription helps thank you all very much so far and let's get right into it okay germany Good declares morning. war on poland all right right into it so yeah so immediately so germany declares war on poland uh 1939 at this point they had already annexed austria they had annexed czechoslovakia right and appeasement clearly was not working and so Poland was the final straw. And you can see here that within a few days, literally a few days, they had encircled 220,000 uh, Poles, right? And there's another 500,000 left, but compared to the 1.7 million Germans um, that were fighting at this point, it's just Poland, unfortunately, never stood a chance. And you combine this with the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, which we'll see in one moment, which was a non-aggression pact between the Soviet Union and Nazi Germany. And there was actually a secret clause in it that had divided up Europe into their two spheres of influence. Um, and Poland was eventually invaded, and we'll see this in a few days, um, was eventually invaded by the Soviet Union as well. And uh, the Polish people... Um, they couldn't they couldn't have stood a chance uh, between these two superpowers and the Polish people um, were really had suffered the most um, because they suffered between uh, the, the, the the Nazis right occupying half their country and the communists occupying the other half um, and the absolute totality and brutality that, that both these sides brought onto the Polish people um, I think is something that should be remembered as well, not just the army sizes, but the amount of human suffering that happened um, um, due to this conflict. Berlin handed the German right, government. Yeah. So, you can, so you can see here that between the, the 1.7 million uh, German troops and the 700,000 Russian troops that unfortunately Poland uh, had never stood a chance. But a lot of there was a lot of Poles that, as it says here, a Polish escape, uh, sorry, uh, a lot of Poles had escaped at this point, and some, um, some fighter pilots actually went and fought in the Battle of Britain, which is not, uh, not, not a very well-known tidbit of history, um, but unfortunately a lot were not able to, and they suffered um, tragically under these regimes uh, for many years. The final note. Warsaw surrenders, yep. We heard from yep. Them by Polish resistance come to an end, yep. That they were prepared. Right. And so Stalin beginning to demand uh, Finnish territory. This was the beginning of the winter war between the USSR and Finland. Um, obviously, the USSR is trying to take back their territories where Finland used to be sort of a puppet state, if you will, of, of the Tsar Nicholas and the Russian Empire. They gained independence after World War I uh, when, the, when the communists um, eventually took over and then Finland was guaranteed the right to autonomy. And Russia is eyeing back these lands, uh, specifically in Karelia, which is this part right here, and some of the northern parts as well that I'm, I'm not sure their name off the top of my head. Um, and the Winter War was, was really a big failure for the Soviet Union. Yes, they did eventually win the war, however... Uh, despite completely outnumbering the Finns, the Finns fought incredibly valiantly, incredibly bravely um, on their home territory. And really, um, the, the Soviets suffered a lot of casualties. Um, 
and you know the, the the Finnish had the courage and bravery to fight back against innumerable odds. Right, they had the Sisu, I think, is the Finnish term, and uh, this really showed Hitler. It, it, it proved to him, at least so he thought, that the Russian might was not really what it is. Um, there's this famous quote that he said: uh, "All we need to do is kick in the door, and the whole rotting structure will come down." Referring to the to the Soviet Union. That went to withdraw that. Yep. And so the portions of Poland formally inducted into Germany. From yep. Poland. Yeah, and so you can see the UK right now is starting to mobilize, despite the fact that it's been a month. I wonder what they were doing before. The state of war would yep. exist between us. They reject giving land. Yeah. yeah, and Hitler escaping the bomb blast in the Munich Beer Hall. That was by Georg Elser, which actually in Vienna right now there is an exhibition of his of his of his work. Um, and yeah, he escaped it by I think it was 20 minutes. It injured a lot of um, officials that were there. Um, and you, you know, you got to think what would have happened if uh, he hadn't have left earlier than he was than he was originally planned to, because uh, it was supposed to go off in the middle of his speech, and he had left much earlier than anticipated and you know this was sort of Hitler believing that he had providence um, on his side. That no such undertaking has nope, been I'm sorry about the glitches there. And that consequently this country yep, the Soviet Union attacks Finland. With Germany. Yep, the Mannerheim line. Right, and you can see you can see the difference here too in, in army size. I mean we have nearly half a million men fighting about 150,000 Finns. Um, and obviously they're pushing into Karelia, um, near, near uh, just north of Leningrad. And in response, the USSR is expelled from the League of Nations. And it's funny that uh, to even think that the League of Nations still existed at this point. Um, and the USSR was expelled over that. And um, yeah, just unfortunate how ineffective the, the League of Nations turned out to be. Oh, I'm sorry about the, sorry about the glitches here. Yeah. Several Finnish victories. Right. Yeah. So you can you can see here that uh, there's there's almost 600,000 Russian soldiers with 155,000 um, 155,000 Finns. There was also some text there that said uh, talking about Falgelb, which was the uh, uh, invasion of Belgium. Right. And the plan was to crash through the Arden forest, which is heavily wooded forest, um, which which on paper sounds logistically impossible to try and push all those through, troops through all that equipment. Um, and the French leadership had, had, had not expected it at all. Um, and they were eventually sort of put crashed through the forest um, and encircled the, the British and uh, the Allied troops at, uh, at Dunkirk. I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself here, though. Yeah, so the invasion of Denmark and Norway at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Mannerheim line, right? You can see the the Soviets have almost a million men now compared to the 130,000 Finnish. So the, the, the Soviet troops are just getting larger and larger and larger. Um, and the Finnish troops are just depleting because there was only so many, there's only so much manpower in Finland. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, they, 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 uh, they, they, they fought as hard as they could and they, they did brilliantly. I'm so sorry about the glitches here, guys. Yeah. And so and so now the winter war is concluded and the borders, right, the Karelian, uh, Karelia is now annexed. Um, and these are the borders that actually Finland still has to this day. Um, although they, they would push back later with the invasion of the Soviet Union and Barbarossa, um, they were eventually, um, when they sued for peace, um, these were the borders that that were given. It was the same as the uh, the post-Winter War borders, and these are the ones that Finland still has to this day. Yep, so Britain and France make a formal agreement that neither will seek a separate peace with Germany. Very important, really tying the allies together and making sure that this wasn't just a, a France and UK in a war, but rather the allies. Punct, right? Overall. <laughs> Yeah, and so here's the, so Bessarabia was a region in Ro, uh, of the former Russian Empire that Romania won, and the USSR is eyeing these territories, which is really making not only the Romanians nervous, but also the Hungarians and, and everyone, all of their neighbors, really. Uh, and this is sort of slowly pushing them more towards the Axis. Um, as opposed to, you know, uh, joining the Allies, which is what Romania had done in World War One, 
Um, so the USSR is really trying to take back their old Russian Empire territories. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was so quick, I couldn't even pause in time. So, so Denmark is invaded, Norway is invaded. Denmark's invasion was so quick, I believe it lasted a total of six hours. Um, so, so some Danish citizens went to bed, a free country, and woke up occupied. Um, so you, it, it's hard to even imagine that. Um, but, the, but there was almost no resistance uh, across the Danish. I believe there was some fighting on the border near Schleswig-Holstein, um, but they marched, the, the German army marched into Copenhagen, um, I, think, I think completely unopposed. As well as the invasion of Norway, um, the, the naval uh, protection of Norway was completely botched by the UK at this point, and Germany was actually able to land, and this, this provided an incredibly stre strategic point um, because they had easier access to the not only Norway's resources, but to the Atlantic Sea as well. And I don't remember exactly when this happened, but eventually the British would go on to capture Iceland without any, uh, without any um, uh, resistance because they had feared that if Iceland was able to fall to the Axis, then it would provide a strategic point for them, not only for their naval bases, but also for them to possibly even launch an invasion of North America. Ah, I'm so sorry about that. Uh, I have to stop saying sorry every time, making me really Canadian. Yeah, so you can see there with a force of 100,000 men, uh, Norway was, was completely taken over. Uh, by the Axis. And so now at this point we have this period called the Phony War where there's not really much happening. You can notice that France has not at all pushed back, pu eh, excuse me, pushed past the, the, the um, oh my god, I want to say the Mannheim line, the Maginot line. Um, there are some border skirmishes that are happening during this time. However, no significant force is able to cross into or past um, each other's territory. So you know, I, I wonder if at this point the, the Allies, they were still hoping to negotiate, possibly not anymore with the fall of Denmark and Norway, but maybe with Poland um, and so. Oh, I totally missed that. All right, so, here's, so here is the invasion. Oh man, this, this is gonna be a long video. <laughs> so here is the invasion of, of France, right? A pushing through the Ardennes forest here. You can see this, this push. Right, and they're going to push all the way through here to eventually encircle the Allied troops in Dunkirk. Right, and as I said, this was thought to be logistically impossible. Um, and on paper, the French army should have done much better. But it came down to the, the classic sort of unsexy parts of war, which is command and control, logistics, and everything like that. French leadership was woefully unprepared, um, despite having you know comparable, if not better, equipment comparable manpower sizes um, and, and a, a capable air force, a, a larger navy than the German navy and, and everything like that, but just leadership um, and, and really sort of infighting of leadership and not having clear plans uh, really is what sort of botched the, the defense of France, which, which led to its, its eventual capitulation. The ground, which will fight on the seas and oceans. Right. 400,000 troops encircled at Dunkirk. Um, there's a bit of a myth, and I talked about this in the World War II video as well, that um, that uh, that uh, that Hitler sort of let them get away as if it was a mercy thing. However, there was a mix-up in communications, I believe, with the 4th Panzer Army. Might not have that completely correct, though I, I'd highly recommend look, looking it up. And they were, actually, uh, they were actually pulled back. They were not actually pushed into Dunkirk, which would have led to obviously a lot more troops being captured. Um, I'd highly recommend watching the movie Dunkirk by Christopher Nolan. This puts a great uh, sort of, I wouldn't say Hollywood spin because it is, uh, you know, quite an accurate film um, of, of some of the civilians that actually came over with their private fishing boats and sailed across the channel to France to help bring some of their men back home. We should right, fight with growing confidence and growing strength in the air. So you can just see that now as the French forces are dwindling, dwindling, they're being captured, they're being encircled, um, that, that the German victory is, is obvious. Italy has now joined the war. They have declared war on France and the United Kingdom. And, and this just really spells the end uh, for France because now they're, they're, they're fighting a two-front war um, in the south here in the province of Savoy. 
Sorry for the pronunciation, and and the Germans in the north here. Ah. Yeah, so you can just see we how fast. Right, Whatever this falls. They got, maybe. Wow, there's so much here. Um, I'm just gonna skip the annexation of the Baltic countries. We shall fight. But but to to put it very briefly, um, they were basically given a, a an ultimatum, which is to say, let's station troops in your country or prepare for war. And you know, in in the face of Nazi Germany on their south. And uh, the Soviet Union here, there was, there was, they almost had no option. On the beaches. So there's the annexation the of Bessarabia, plans, orders for the invasion the of Britain. So this is something that comes up a lot in the altist community is what if Hitler had have done Operation Sea Lion? Now, very quickly, my personal take, it was, it was, it, yeah, it was, it would have been impossible, even with in Normandy, the allies having naval supremacy and someone commented the difference between supremacy and superiority so i'm going to get these terms right so even with the with having naval and air supremacy it was still the largest landing invasion of all time and it was thought that it might not even have worked and so even if the germans got naval superiority not supremacy so let's say the royal navy is somehow taken out um, an air superiority but not supremacy um, I don't think it would have been possible to ever invade uh, the British Isles in, in this sort of manner. Um, I, 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 I just don't think it's something. I mean, it's fun to play around with, but don't think it's possible. Uh, so now we really begin the sort of naval war between the UK um, and, the, and the Germans and the fight for North Africa as well. And in the streets, we shall fight in the hills. Yeah, 15th September, we never, never surrender. happened. And if yeah, exactly. So the failure to to achieve air superiority, right? The Battle of Britain, which, as I mentioned before, some Polish pirate, yeah, Polish pirates, <laughs> some Polish pilots uh, were fighting in um, that, that contributed significantly. Um, you know, the failure it, it it results in a postponement and eventually cancellation. I don't think it ever would have happened, anyways, as I mentioned. But which I do not. For it was planned for, for a moment. Believe. Operation Sea Line. This island, or a large part of it, was subjugated and starving. Then our empire, beyond the seas, armed and yeah, guarded by the yeah. British fleet, would carry out... Right, and, and here is the, the large battle for North Africa. This pushes back and forth quite a lot, with it eventually culminating in uh, El Alamein. And let's keep watching into this. Until in God's yep. good time, the new world... So, it's not postponed. It's it's postponed, but I digress. Yeah. So it's it's so the the air the air war has been won, um, and this was sort of telling of the times to come uh, and the issues that Germany would have in its air. Oh, with all its power and might. Yep. So now the Except Axis has emerged. The so to say. and the liberation of the old. Yep. So a German invasion of Britain at this point postponed. It's over. But you can see that the that the Romanians and the Hungarians, the Bulgarians, they're 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 starting to be questioned right uh, people are starting to get worried about what is going on right with the soviets and to their east um, and the germans to their north and northwest um, you know this side of the world is really the next big question while the fighting in north africa is going on and so romania and hungary um, and bulgaria they're slowly being influenced and pushed towards the axis um, mostly because they, they don't have any other choice right they have no other choice um, and Mussolini is now setting his ambitions on Greece and, and everything like this. Yep. Yeah, deciding to invade, invade Greece. So very briefly, we're only two and a half minutes in and I'm 18 minutes talking. Uh, very briefly, I, I gotta stop talking so much. Um, the, the invasion of Greece was a complete failure. They were not able to push back um, in any sort of way. They actually pushed into Albania. And this is what delayed eventually Operation Barbarossa because the Germans had to come in and they had to push. Um, they had to push the Greeks back. So this was a big failure for the Italians. It was, it was very embarrassing for the Italian army. Um, and uh, it, it, was, it sort of showed Churchill that Italy is the so-called uh, soft underbelly of Europe. Yep, so the Greek counteroffensive through here. I didn't. Yep. So hungry. So here we go. And this is this is the consequences of, of being pushed into one side. Yep. So Spain. So Spain at this point had already gone through. Excuse me. Their civil war, um, and 
Francisco Franco was obviously talked about into joining the Axis. They were promised Gibraltar. They were promised African lands. Um, and he said no, which was an incredibly wise decision um, because Spain at this point w was practically ruined, right? Practically ruined through the Civil War. Um, and and it, it led to not opening up another front that the Allies would have had to have um, fought and another power that they wouldn't have to have fought as well, right? You can see the Greeks here, they're actually pushing into Albania uh, despite having uh, so nearly half as many men as, uh, as the Axis forces here, right? You can see in North Africa as well, right? Them starting to push back, 42,000 encircled here. There were Australian troops um, that were also in North Africa too. USSR offered to join the Axis. I did not know that. I did not know that. Okay. Never in the field yeah. of human and so here we go. So so they're starting to push back into North Africa, country. right? Things are starting to but turn. so much old, turn. so many, to so few. For the Italians. All our yeah. hearts go out to the fight of Biden. And now look Brilliant look at the numbers. Easy. Look at the numbers increasing in North Africa, right? This is because of the end and in uh, Albania here too. Because uh, this is when the German enforcements With our are own coming in. Eyes day after day. Sorry about the glitches, I guys. Hope. Indeed, I yeah, you can see Greece being pushed back. Be North Africa starting to push it, back. If Yugoslavia, and right, which was a which was a monarchy, was um, under under Peter II at this point, was was invaded and very quickly taken over. Yugoslavia was one of the pains of the Axis um, because it, it required nearly, I believe it was half a million troops or maybe 300,000 troops stationed there because of the absolute brutal effectiveness of the Yugoslav uh, partisans. And maybe I'll, I'll get into a video about them one day, um, but they were just absolutely crucial um, in resistance in this part of the world and they were very, very effective. Um, and they were a massive pain uh, for the for the Axis, and they had to station significant resources um, and troops there to help fight against the partisans. Yep. So you can see Greece here being pushed back, Yugoslavia ending. Yep. So you can see here now there's there's almost a million, uh, 1.2 million troops now pushing back Greece, uh, and this is eventually evacuated. And I believe that this was the first time that paratroopers were ever used um, in warfare, which was by the Germans. I don't remember exactly the, the operation, um, but this was the first time that, that paratroopers were used in, in combat, which would then be later used um, in, in, in operations such as Market Garden in France in 1944. I didn't know he committed suicide. Yep, yeah, Greece has surrendered now. Right, so we can see here that the Axis are starting to push back in North Africa. Iraq is taken. By the Allies. And now, here we go, the big, big chapter. Um, and before we get there, let's just have a look at the world. I mean, we have nearly two million German troops, if not more, when this counter ends, preparing to fight the Soviet Union. Um, so things in Europe are looking incredibly bleak, right? The Allies had pushed down to here and have now been pushed back out of North Africa. Um, despite things having looked like they were turning around. Um, and now the, the Russian bear awakes with the, yeah, with the invasion of the Soviet Union. Uh, so 3.4 million troops, crazy. Wow, look at this, look at that. Insane. Wow. That is, that is so cool. So yeah, you can see three and a half million troops um, encircled. I think the music's a little bit too loud. Let me turn that down a little. Uh, so yeah, three and a half million troops, the largest land invasion in human history. There has never been anything larger um, um, since, and I, I hope there never will be something as large. And so you have Finland pushing in the north. I don't even know how many were encircled there. It looked like almost a million, a million and a half. Um, and the Soviet army was, was woefully underprepared for this push. Um, and the Germans advanced incredibly far um, during, during the summer months of 1941. Yeah. And so this is when, um, yes, yeah, so as it says here, Hitler against the advice of his generals shifts some forces from the Moscow offensive. The plan was to push straight to Moscow and to capture the city, leading to what they thought would have been the capitulation. 
Whether that's true, we don't know. Possibly the Soviet government might have moved to the Euros. Who knows? We can talk about that in Altist. Um, but at this point, I mean, hundreds of thousands of Soviet uh, troops were captured. They were encircled in the in the uh, in the basically the, how quickly Germany had pushed into the Soviet Union, um, which led to you know almost almost having a million more troops um, due to the losses from the Soviets. Oh, sorry, from the Germans. That's, yeah. It's so cool with how, with how fast this is. Yeah, and so... Fascinating, this is just so cool. Joe's show so and says four and a half million have already died in Russia to great exaggeration. Yes. So this things look incredibly bleak as we're going into the winter um, of 1941. Things are looking incredibly bleak for the allies. I mean, North Africa has practically stalled out, albeit Iran, Iraq, Syria, Lebanon um, have been have been captured back from the um, back from the Axis. Right. There have been hundreds of thousands, millions of Soviet troops killed, millions captured. Um, and this is probably one of the bleakest points, right? The siege of Leningrad, which would last for four years. There's some brilliant films about that if you're interested in it. Um, and so we'll push on to uh, Stalingrad, which will come up next year. There's the uh, Crimea captured. All right. But the Soviets are starting to they're starting to mobilize. They're getting more and more troops in, right? And this is when the U.S. the U.S. Um, materials are starting to come into Moscow as well, right? Boom. So it just perfectly right on time. Um, so Japan attacks Pearl Harbor, bringing the USA into the global conflict. Hitler declares war on them, and now the U.S. fighting machine is really in full force. Although they were supplying heavy amounts of material to the Allies at this point anyways. Yesterday. Right. So now, yes. So this is where it begins to turn. 1941. Right, you can see North Africa here. Right, the Soviets beginning to push back. In yes. Infamy. Boom, so you can see that um, after the, the massive assault that happened in the summer, Right, the the Soviets are able to sort of regroup and they're able to push back. Um, the so the the winter of 1941 was particularly cold. It's particularly brutal, um, and the Germans um, were not able to push as far as they had wanted to. Also, at this point, there was starting to be general distrust. Um, so the gen the generals distrusting Hitler and some of his uh, some of his um, um, decisions and some of his tactics, and this was sort of starting to see the end um, uh, for for the Axis forces, albeit it would take, uh, of course, another three years before that really came down into it. So this is the great, the Rommel, right, is starting to lose his Africa Corps, and they're starting to be pushed out of there as well. United by the forces. States of America was suddenly and deliberately Yeah, you can attacked. see this, yeah. Look but at this massive encirclement here. Yeah, 102,000 encircled. Be building up for a 1942 offensive. Right, so they at the Soviet oil fields. All right, so North Africa is stalled out at this point, sending additional divisions. Okay, so Mussolini, they're sending more divisions uh, down to North Africa. And they're sort of holding the lines here. Right, so here, right, the Germans, they're planning their 1942 offensive where many were captured. This was also the year that um, the death squads were really ramped up. Um, the SS, uh, um, um, oh my God, Einschatzkulten, right, they were really uh, um, um, sort of tormenting the people that, that, that were in these lands and they were really stepping up um, their, really their, their, their organized efforts to kill um, what they called partisans um, of, of the Soviet Union and, and a lot of human tragedy was really occurring at this time as well. To 
25,000 captured. I'm pushing towards Egypt, right? And you can see here, North Africa is once again being pushed back. All right, so North Africa was really going back and forth throughout most of the war. Um, but we can see the difference here in manpower, right? The Soviets, and here we go, El Alamein, the final battle, right? The Soviets now, they have 5.6 million, 3.3 million for the Germans. However, their equipment differences was, was very large at this point. Um, and so that was one of, the, one of the main reasons that despite having 2 million less men, um, the, the Germans were still able to push so significantly. Sorry guys, had to make a quick edit here. There's gonna be some issues with the text doubling up. It'll go away in a minute. I tried re-downloading the video. I tried a different source. It, I don't know why, so we're just gonna deal with it though. Um, so Stalingrad is coming up. That's gonna happen in August. Um, and that was really the turning point against the Axis, like the complete turning point where they were really on the back end from there and they never pushed back again. So let's keep, let's keep seeing how the, the summer offensive of 1942 plays out. Got my four DLC. Yeah, so here's the double text. Just the, I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, look at the difference in manpower. 5.8 million to 3.2. Crazy. So at this point, Stalingrad is in full swing. They're trying to push for the city. They're trying to capture it. It's not only a huge uh, victory for the Axis, uh, just because of the, the the amount of people that live there and the strategicness of having access to the to the sea um, and also the oil fields that are nearby but as well as the propaganda purposes and this is what hitler was really really after um, because it's obviously named after stalin himself um, and the 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 failure to capture it was really a big turning point in the war yeah so again sorry about the double text Yeah, so here with uh, with Operation Torch, right? With Operation Torch, we can see the the Allies landing in modern day um, Morocco, right? And now they're able to sort of squeeze the 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 Axis troops out of North Africa, um, and then eventually launch their invasion of Sicily, which Churchill, like I said before, thought was the soft underbelly um, of of the Axis, right? Rommel has now practically been defeated. Um, in in North Africa. Yep, and here's the winter of 1942, right, with Hitler not allowing the troops to actually retreat. He, he expressly forbade it, um, and the Luftwaffe tried with mild success to actually supply them by air, although it was ultimately fruitless uh, because, like I said, they, they were a failure in their attempt. Yeah, only imagine. Yeah, only a small imagine. There's the famous speech, the Totalen Krieg by Josef Goebbels. Right, and so the Sixth Army has now surrendered. I already talked about this in the World War II video, but they, they held out there for a while, a few months actually. There's a fascinating video by Mark Felton. I'd highly recommend it. But this is the point of total mobilization, right? This is when you click All Adults Serve um, in the conscription <laughs> menu in OE4. And at this point, the Axis are really on the back pedal here by 1943. Yeah, so Romania pulls out. Capturement, you can see them slowly being pushed at, pushed back. Right, but what's fascinating here is the, uh, look at the small pushes being made here, and I, I don't know much about that, but uh, look at the look, there's still there still is some fighting left in them. Yeah, and so here the northern Africa is practically done. Um, and dissent is really starting to pick up in Italy at this point, um, particularly in in the south, um, as well as is, is obviously in the capital and some of the northern regions too, where dissent is really starting to pick up um, amongst its population. And this will eventually end in Mussolini being overthrown. Yeah, so Africa has practically collapsed. And here's the invasion, the upcoming invasion of Sicily. 
Right. And that's interesting, actually. I didn't know that. Um, but there was a large focus that Hitler had on the sort of Wunderwaffen, the sort of wonder weapons um, that he thought would eventually win the war. This included the V2 flying jets. Um, and there was, for some reason, some odd fascination with these wonder weapons um, that would have destroyed the Allies' fighting capacity in some manner. And uh, what they really needed to focus on was actually their production. There's a famous story of Albert Speer. He went to a factory um, and f uh, in the evening and he found that all the workers were at home, right? Uh, and this was because Germany up to a point was not operating in full uh, war production mode. Um, and there were some serious gaps within their production and their economy um, that, that could have helped the, the war effort out. But instead, they focused a lot of resources into these wonder weapons, Wunderwaffen, um, and other things like this. Yeah, so this is the Allied bombing campaign, right? Which had devastating effects, too. Devastating effects. And here it comes, yep. Yep, so this, at this point, he is arrested. Um, he manages to, Mussolini actually manages to break out um, from help from the Germans and, and he is in, installed in a puppet government um, in northern Italy until he is eventually captured by partisan shot and then hung from a gas station. Um, and Hitler actually learned of this news and that was one of the reasons why he decided his body would be burned um, so that it could not fall into the hands of, of, of anyone else. Yep, Axis forces evacuate Sicily. Yeah, so yeah, exactly. The tide of the war is heavily shifted in favor of the Allies. Yep, so here, and that's that's the sort of breakup of, of Italy. Yep, the secret operation. Mm-hmm. All right, 22 million British men and women are working for the war effort, right? And, and just briefly... Um, this doesn't have to do with army sizes or anything, but just briefly, uh, you know, this really changed the role of women too in post-war society, right? Women are working in the factories because the men are at the front um, and, and the role of society really shift, uh, shifted because of World War II, right? And it brought, uh, you know, the army was eventually desegregated in, in the United States. Um, and so the sort of society that we know today is much of a cause of World War II. It really did advance quite a lot of uh, social issues, progressive issues, and obviously I'm painting a very broad brush here. It's more complicated than that, but you can see some of these themes uh, within history, right? But we can see that six and a half million Soviet troops versus 2.6 million exhausted Germans, not to say the Soviets were not exhausted as well, but they were constantly mobilizing still, um, as well as you have the push in the South and, you know, if it wasn't for, uh, you know, Adolf Hitler himself, and obviously the bomb plot is coming up in July of 1944, you would have think that this would have been the time to maybe sue for peace in some sort of manner, maybe even make peace with the Allies, try and push the Russians out. Who knows? Not that that would have happened, though, to be fair. Yep, Kiev being liberated. Oh, how history... Sometimes the tables are turned. Heavy bombing in Berlin. Yeah. War production being one of the most important parts of, uh, of an overall war effort. Yes, Normandy. And here comes D-Day coming up in June. A bomb plot in July. Yeah, so Leningrad, as it says here, was under siege for a hundred, sorry, 873 days that the city was under siege. Um, I mean, you can only imagine what the people in Leningrad, um, what they went through during these times. Operation Overlord, here comes D-Day, right? And the Germans had actually thought that the, the Allies would go across from the shortest point here, though there is, there's, and I'm getting too long with this video, but there's some fascinating stories of the intelligence 
that the British had done, such as making inflatable tanks for army for army pictures. Obviously, the Enigma Code. There's there's so many facets to World War II. It's just I could be sitting here for 15 hours and I wouldn't even scratch the surface of all the the tales and stories and facets that went into World War II. And uh, just looking at the army sizes and trying to sort of oversimplify things, if you will. Um, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. So as you can see, Finland is starting to be pushed back now slowly as well in the north. Right, and they will eventually flip sides. Romania now. Yep. They're pushing into Poland. And eventually culminating here in, in D-Day. Yeah, and I think it was around this point that Speer had stepped into the position uh, of armaments minister. I believe he, he was in a different post before. And this is when, you know, the German economy finally in 1944 was really fully, fully mobilized, um, whereas the Allies had done it before. And as well with the United States being in, uh, able to help out, not being bombed, not having these production disruptions, um, they were able to help out significantly as well. Sailors and airmen. Right, and uh, Romania too. Right. There's still the partisans that are happening in Yugoslavia, but all these countries are starting to soften up. They're starting to see more resistance um, within these these axis uh, these axis partners, which would eventually lead, unfortunately, to domination by another superpower, which would be the Soviet Union. Of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the Great Crusade. I love how they added in the speeches. Super months. cool. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of complete air superiority so at this point the Luftwaffe was was practically uh, useless they they, they they enjoyed complete superiority in the air complete naval superiority as well um, and that that is one of the key reasons why the invasions of d-day went so well um, as well as a couple other factors too Many loving people everywhere march with you in company with our brave allies Love that old American and brothers in arms cool. on other fronts you will bring about the destruction of the German yeah. war machine. And you can see it now the just pushing so much because Army Group Center has basically been destroyed. I believe this was the one led um, by... Mm, can't remember off the top of my head, so I'm not going to just say it because I might be wrong. Um, and the Soviets now, they're really just free reign, and now it's basically a, a strong push um, towards the German army. And, and 32,000 captured. And here's the bomb plot, right? So that was orchestrated by by many, but uh, the one who left the bomb was Colonel Stauffenberg. Again, very quickly, um, Stauffenberg actually, there was supposed to be two bombs in the briefcase. However, due to lack of time, there was only one put in. If there had been two bombs put into the briefcase that was put beside the table leg, it is arguable that it would have killed Hitler there. Um, there was also a few other plots on Hitler's life. There was one in his airplane where there was a bomb left in it and it was supposed to, it was like a cap and fuse bomb. So the cap would have been slowly disintegrated and would have eventually been with it uh, exploding. But because it was in the air cabin, um, the pressure and the coldness of it led to it not actually going off. Um, and so there's a whole bunch of tales of, of, of attempts on Hitler's life. There's a video that I'll probably be watching. But you, you got to think of the bomb plot, how to change. But at this point, Hitler got even more paranoid. He became more distrusting. Um, he was more aloof. He was less willing to make decisions. Um, and when he did, it was totally against the vice, advice of his generals. And at this point, I think anyone that wasn't a fervent Nazi saw that the writing was completely on the wall. Right. As it says here, it would use it as an excuse to wipe out anti-war and opposition sentiment. This was really the, the absolute breakdown of Nazi for society. In a free world. Yeah, you can see the, the freedom, the uh, France being liberated. Romo Romania is now capitulated, only to be led by another totalitarian force. Um, but you can see here, right, they're pushing back into Belgium. An uprising in Yugoslavia. This was the communist partisans that I was talking about. Yep, so here's here's the stiff resistance. So you can see that they're starting to push north through here in, in the Netherlands. This was actually led by Canadian troops. Um, we still do a march every year called the Nijmegen March um, in, in commemoration of this. And 
Um, the plan is basically to push through and then push over those those flatlands as well. But they were facing some very stiff resistance um, on the on the German border and as well as um, the the Maginot Line too from from German soldiers that really at this point. Since you're fighting on home territory, there was a lot more to fight for. And uh, I think, and obviously this is just my opinion, and I've, I've read some historical accounts, but at this point it was no longer fighting for Nazism, but it was fighting for, for Germany, if you will. And obviously there were millions of soldiers, I mean, 2,086,000 2, uh, 86, of them. They all had their different reasons um, to, to have been forced to fight or to fight voluntarily. Um, but really when you encounter an enemy that's on their home territory, it really does change quite a lot. Right, rather than being in a foreign land. Greece is now liberated. Yep, the Volkssturm, which turned out to be completely useless, um, but was basically a civilian army and was the last ditch effort um, of Germany. Yep, so Budapest. Right, you can see the Soviets just sweeping in on Eastern Europe, right, where the Allies have stalled, actually, um, in the West here. Yep, Antwerp. Look at these numbers. I mean, look at them just falling. Look at the 2.9 million, right, in the West, 600,000 in the South, 7.2 million, <laughs> 7.2 million men on the Eastern Front. Just, just insane amounts of numbers. And there's the, there's the Battle of the Bulge. This was the encirclement attempt um, that would have really tried to push the Allies back because they were quite thinly spread out here. Um, but they were eventually, um, they were eventually repelled. That was the last time the German forces ever went on the offensive. Yep, so they're pu pushed into East Prussia. Yep, and he's moved to Berlin where he will never leave. Hitler, that is. Yep, the Oder River. Yeah, and here's the Yalta Conference. And this is still a conference that is controversial, if you will, to this day, um, where, you know, I mean, you could make a whole video on the Yalta conference, but just very briefly, I think Poland saw the shortest end of the stick in all of this, um, which is really was a tragedy. All right, and, and this was sort of the attempt to contain, contain sorry, the Soviets, but it ultimately led to, to failure to contain their emissions. Yeah, just, seven, just millions pushing. All right, you think at this point you would sue for peace, but Hitler being... Who he was, the state was only going to die with him. Yeah. Right, slowing their advanced. And, uh, and that was as far as the Allied troops could have pushed as well. Yeah, Mussolini and his mistress, as I said, hung from a gas station. Shot. Yeah, 95,000 encircled. Here, as it is, the Battle of Berlin, 479,000 captured. The Hitler kills himself on April 30th, 1945, and eight days, correction, yes, sorry, yeah, eight days later, on the 7th of May, 1945, Germany surrenders, commemorating VE Day victory in Europe, right? And the Wehrmacht, right, and German civilians as well are trying to push west as fast as possible during this incredibly chaotic times um, so that they're able to sort of surrender themselves to the allies and rather the Russians. At this point, there were a lot of, there was a, a ton of fear due to the years of propaganda against the Russians. And, um, and, and uh, there were a lot of people that actually took their own lives, right? And there were those that really wanted to push towards the allies because they thought they would be safer there. And from what we know now in, uh, in hindsight, it was definitely a smart idea to not end up in the Soviet sphere of influence for your family um, afterwards. So there we go. Thank you all very much for watching me. You can uh, for watching me react to this, commentate on this, whatever. I know this was a super long one, but here you go. Right, six years of conflict that left Europe in ruins, everyone bankrupt. Um, a whole new division of Europe fought between West and East, the beginning of the Cold War, and American dominance throughout the century. Um, the, because the 20th century really is the American century where um, the economies for the, for the America was, was really, really good. Um, and, and they were able to sort of take advantage of that, which led to the 50s um, and the sort of post-war boom that we saw there. 
Thank you all very, very much for watching. Sorry about it being so long, but if you've been here the whole time, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much.